Hello homeschool moms, this is Demetria with Mompreneurs and Heels and ChristianHomeschoolMoms.com and I have a guest with me today and she is my Hi. high school graduate. <laughs> so this is Naomi yeah. and Naomi has just graduated high school through homes homeschooling through high school. So. Yeah. Why don't you just tell everyone about your experience homeschooling, like how long you've homeschooled? So for freshman year online school, I liked it because um, it was basically public school at home, so they gave you everything to do and all you all you really need is just a computer and a notebook and a pencil and that's all you need and you just do it. But it was difficult because it was the same amount of schoolwork as like a public school or maybe even more because it was a lot of work but you have to do it all at home and you have different teachers for everything but you have like you're not in person so you have to email them sometimes it takes them a while so it's a lot of work and most people I knew in it were like always behind and to be not behind you had to do school all day and always be on a computer so it's kind of hard but it's good if you have a busy schedule so you don't want to like go to public school but you still want to get like the accreditation from there it's, it can be good and then for sophomore year, I did charter school where they give you money where you can get um, you can get curriculum or you can get like different classes and stuff and then you just have to have an ES that you meet once a month. So I didn't like that as much either, but it was still helpful to like be able to take some classes kind of for free. <laughs> Wait, for junior and senior year, I did CC, so classical conversation. So it's like classical learning and you go to school but you go once a week and it's super small. And yeah, I like CC. I like um, getting to have, because we have a lot of discussions and we get to give our opinions and read a lot of books. It's a lot of writing and reading. So it can be pretty hard. Challenge three is really hard. But yeah, I enjoyed it and it was helpful to like make me a better writer, I feel like. Good, good. Yeah, so you've had a good experience with homeschooling your high school year. So it is possible to yeah. get through high school through homeschooling. And like you've mentioned, you've gone through several different um, types of homeschooling. And we ended up with classical conversations for your junior and senior year. So yeah. I think that was a success. I think yeah. we, we had a good experience with that. Um, and then, so what are your plans actually at this point now that you have graduated what are you going to do uh i'm gonna go to college i'm not sure which one yet we're still deciding but okay i'm gonna be a music major so. music yep. yeah music is your your love all right so my next question for you is uh about high schoolers and like any advice that you have for incoming high schoolers who are transitioning from the public school system or maybe a private school um into homeschooling so this is a big change and so what are some of your advice that you would give to them um, I would say like I think first some of it depends on like your personality and like if you're more introverted or extroverted and like also I guess why you're homeschooling like if it's because of your schedule or if it's just because you don't like the school system or if it's because of like any other reason or like the people you're around because then that will change how you want to be homeschooled and then after you figure that out then you have to look at like the different options you have and like choose the best one so if it's because maybe you're like committed to a career that you want or like sports or dance or something so you're doing that like all day so you don't want to go to school for eight hours so then you might want to do online school but maybe a private one because the public online schools like you have to do it all day so it's all work but if it's private it's more flexible or if it's because maybe you just don't want to deal with like having to be around people every day all the time it could be something like cc or like a once a week co-op thing so you can just chill at home or if it's just because of like the workload it could just be like more traditional homeschool or just something that's more like catered to like your pace like the pace that you learn at so like it just depends on how you want homeschool and like what your state offers because if maybe you have less options so then it might be easier to decide but yeah it depends on a lot of things yeah there's a lot of factors to consider when when homeschool when changing from um, a school system 
to homeschooling. So mm-hmm. like you mentioned, there's the state you live in and what yes. are the requirements of homeschooling and then what are your reasons for homeschooling? Um, so it's not just jump ship and, you know, jump in. Like you have to kind of think about what your goals are before you make a big transition like home education. But once you figured that, figured it out, what your goals are and why you're doing it and how to do it successfully or make that transition successfully, then it can work and it can be a great lifestyle for you. Um, and also I think it depends on how much you care about like the high school experience and like how much you want that and like how many things you want to be involved in. Mm-hmm. Because like if you want to have like all the different like dances and events and like clubs, you can still get those, but you just have to like find them from different homeschool groups or like go to your friends. Uh, schools or just like find different ways to do it but if you don't care too much about that then you can easily like not worry about it yeah so the social aspect you have to kind of piece it together Mm -hmm. um yourself so there so there there are some different things to look at with homeschooling depending on what your goals are if social is extremely important to you you must have a prom and you must you know have these things then Mm -hmm. um like you mentioned you can you can find it by joining a friend who's in public school or you can create your own uh or not create your own but join something maybe a homeschool community that you're involved in is having something like that and you'll have to search it out so those are things to think about before just kind of jumping into homeschooling because it means you know there's a lot of meaning behind what you're doing and so if you want to change gears then you have to know what's expected um Mm -hmm. so and then also like with COVID 19 right now as we're recording this we're still in the middle of the pandemic and we're still at shelter in place and so a lot of students are um everybody's home now for school and it's been quite a wild ride the past few weeks for a lot of people and it's been scary and it's been frustrating and so what are, what are your suggestions that are like what are your thoughts about homeschooling is is this do you consider what is happening to be technically homeschooling when everybody is kind of um taken out of the classroom and brought home to work on their schoolwork and join multiple zoom sessions throughout the day and how mm-hmm. how do you feel about all of that in terms of it being called homeschooling and do you think there's a difference between what we did as a homeschool family over the years and what is happening worldwide with kids who are having to come home for for online school yeah um i'd say you are homeschooling it's more like depending on how your school is handling it it's more like online school than any other type of homeschooling but it's definitely very different because like firstly like you're not homeschooling by choice it's not your decision you're kind of forced out of the system you're already used to so that's different from if you were to choose a specific program and also you were like taken from a regular school system to an online system which is very like that was the word it's like very disconcerting and you're just jumping from one thing to the next and you're not like you choose this one thing and then you do it for the whole year so it definitely doesn't feel like that with most homeschooling it doesn't feel like that it just depends on like how you homeschool and yeah. you'll usually be more prepared and the teachers will be prepared because they're like trained to be like online school teachers or homeschool teachers and they're not public school teachers trying to fit into that so it's not as hard yeah yeah so there i'm glad we talked about it there is a, a significant difference between what's happening and what we're doing with uh with homeschooling and what we've experienced as a homeschool family is definitely not what you know the frustrations that people are experiencing with online school right now um during the pandemic so i just wanted to also clarify that so that in case you are watching this and you are thinking of homes or have thought of homeschooling but now after your experience with uh covid and having to try this on your own at home uh, that it's not working the way you thought or that it's just been a disaster just to let you know that is a whole different ball game like I, I'm not even certain how difficult I know it must be extremely hard because you're not really um, given the option to to be flexible and to do things in your own way for your own family for your kids the way that works for your kids so that's yeah. that's the difference um, so 
Uh, what are some of the activities and interests you have that you've done outside of your school days? Um, I've mostly done a lot of music and like creative, like art related stuff. And then I've also done church things. So I've been involved in like my youth group and worship team. And just, I've also been in choir, violin. Um, I just take a lot of music classes and like playing instruments. Mm -hmm. And I've done art. Um, I'm on leadership at my church. So just a lot of music and then a lot of church related things. Good. And basketball and just like sports and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to talk about college applications real quick like what are some of your suggestions for those who are seniors or going into senior year who are thinking about what they need to do for applying for schools or colleges um so as a homeschooler it's and you're kind of doing the same thing but you're just working harder because you have to do it yourself and colleges don't always they like put more emphasis on your testing scores than like your GPA because you're homeschooled. So unless you're thinking of going to community college, which is a smart idea because you pay less money and then you don't have to worry too much about, you don't have to do SATs or ACTs. But if you want to go to like a specific university, like as a freshman college, then definitely take the ACT and the SAT like multiple times until you get a score you really like. So you can get scholarships and get into like your top school. And also if you're interested in, in state schools or UC schools, definitely take um, either do A to G classes or take SAT subject tests so that you can get in. And for applications, just I guess to just get really good at like writing and you can use Khan Academy to like get better at like math and science too. And if you can write really good papers and you have really high scores, then you'll probably get in. But yeah, it's just a lot of work and it takes up a lot of time, but it's worth it if you have like a goal and you know like where you want to go and making a spreadsheet helps a lot too. So, you know, like all of the information that you need. Yeah. So that's that's really good advice, especially um, like everything you said was good. Um, the spreadsheet is something that you started last year, right? Yes. I think, uh, um, OK, so we are ta we're still talking about um, college applications, and I think some things that she mentioned were really spot on because it takes so much time and energy to um to go through the process of applying for school so go ahead and explain like some things you did um yeah i basically just i made a spreadsheet and i put like the prices of everything for the tuition and the room and board and i put how many scholarships i got and i put like just all the different information that i would need and then I filled it all out and like the deadlines for everything. And also definitely apply to outside scholarships because you can only get so many scholarships from the school. And yeah, just a lot of different steps to take, I guess. How soon in advance um, before you graduated did you start the whole process? Well, like SATs and ACTs are junior year or like even before that, but just applying, when did I start applying? There's a time you're supposed to start. I forgot. <laughs> I like when, when like, did you start making the uh, the spreadsheet? Maybe the beginning of senior year or the end of junior year. Probably. Yeah. So so about a year before, like, well, not a year before, like the beginning of your senior year, uh, you should go ahead and start the whole yeah. process. Yeah. And even if you can, if you can do it that summer, even better, because that way when you're working on your schoolwork, you don't have so much to do mm -hmm. with it. So you just, if you can get started in the summer and making that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, what else really helped you through your senior year? Because you didn't, so with classical conversations, they didn't really um, pile a lot of work on students the, the last year because they knew like that's the year that they're applying for colleges and everything. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of how was your routine then for applications and uh, how did you how did you do the application process and get through schoolwork? Because you you did still have yeah. a healthy amount of school to do. Yeah. And it was challenging. Mm -hmm. So how did you do it? Uh, well, first semester is when you're supposed to start applying, like in yeah, like the first semester. So because they know that you have to do that, 
like most of the time the first semester senior is pretty chill so you don't have to do too much and you just it's kind of like i don't know it's not really like having a job but it's kind of like having a job because it's a lot of work so you just you almost prioritize your college a little bit more than school because at this point it's kind of more important but you still like do your schoolwork and then second semester then your it's school gets back to being kind of hard again but by then you've you're kind of done applying and you're just waiting by then so it's easier yeah 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 so it's a process better to get started now than later if you're in your senior year get started asap mm -hmm. um, take those tests your um the, the SAT and the ACT, take them both yeah. and take them your uh, early into your senior year. So go ahead and get take those. Take them junior year. Yeah, take your, yeah, start taking them in your junior year. Take the PSATs in your sophomore year. Yeah. Or no? freshman. You can take it in eighth grade. Yeah, you can take it younger. You could take it in eighth grade and then take it again your ninth grade year and then 10th grade too. And then 11th and 12th, take your SATs and ACTs. And just try to get your scores really high, you know. Mm -hmm. And so study for them, prepare for them. Take If you want to take extra classes, you can, or just study on your own. You studied on your own. Yeah, I use Khan Academy. Yeah, Khan yeah. Academy is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So uh, what parts of it did you think were hard on um, the test? For the SAT, I didn't like it as much, and the math was pretty hard for me, so that brought my score down, so it wasn't that great. But then the ACT for me was better, even though there's also science, but the science is more like logic. Like, it's not that you have to know a scientific equation, you just have to like know how to logically figure something out. So it would, that was easier for me, and my score was higher. So, yeah, just like take, if one isn't working for you, you can take it again or take the different one. Take a different test. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we're just kind of waiting on our, our official graduation celebration once COVID is over and the, the ban has been lifted for us to get out. Um, I know some states are out already, but we're not in California. So we're just kind of, we're still waiting. And when that happens, we'll celebrate and our community is going to um, have a graduation ceremony so we will still get that and so yeah. we're excited about that um and then we will be focusing mainly on college and uh getting into getting you at your school yeah and which we'll announce another time yeah. and uh and uh yeah getting you acclimated to your your new life it, in the world of college. So that's exciting. We're looking forward to appreciating this new side of like our relationship now that we're on the other side of homeschooling. Homeschooling is over, but you know, we're still enjoying life. We're doing yeah. uh, different, different things now. So she's moving on to college and then the rest of her life, which is whatever <laughs> God wants to do in her life. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. I just, I'm just watching. I'm just happy. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yay. That's all we wanted to share with you guys. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or you can hit her up on Naomi Shalom yeah. Music okay. or her Instagram, which is Naomi.Shalom. Okay. And you can follow me on Instagram. It's Demetria.Zinga. And that's it for now. Thanks, guys. Bye.